Last year, Brian and I researched Coupang's stock, ticker symbol CPNG, from scratch. We actually came to different conclusions about the business. More recently, we discovered that famed investor Stanley Drunken Drunkenmiller has taken an enormous position uh, in Coupang. In fact, this is his number one holding with an 18% share of his portfolio devoted to Coupang stock. Uh, with that, we thought right now would be a good time to revisit this company, see how it scores our investing checklist today, and ask ourselves if we think this company is investable. Uh, my name is Brian Farley. And my name is Brian Stoffel. And thank you to StockCard.io for sponsoring today's video. So, Brian, let's do a quick recap for people that didn't watch that video. What did we say at the time about Coupang? All right. So, Elevator Pitch, Coupang is the Amazon of South Korea. But what really stuck out to us when we researched this company was that they, they are the better Amazon. And by that, I mean Amazon took convenience to a, a whole new level in North America. Coupang one up them. You could, if you don't like a product, Leave it on your doorstep. You don't. You don't have to pack it up. You you just have to send a message that says come pick it up. So like that shirt you got that you don't like, just leave it there. Or order something at 10 p.m. before you go to bed. Wake up at 6 a.m. the next morning. It's there. Uh, they they were the Amazon of Amazons. Yeah, basically both of us said I want to be a Coupang customer, yeah, but I think Coupang can do that. that because their geography is so much smaller than the United States, what Amazon has to uh, to cover. But still, they were better at e-commerce than, than Amazon was. So we said the bull case moving forward, number one, this was to us e-commerce done perfectly, right? The, the right way. So that was a strong case for the company. We loved that they they their mission statement isn't really a mission statement, but you see it everywhere. Like it clearly drives everything, which was, how did I ever survive without Coupang? And after we dove into it, we were like, yep, I get it. Uh, three, we thought that this business had a wide moat protected by network effects, uh, the low cost production and brand. Both of us, I think, gave this company really good score on our uh, moat scores. We did. Uh, we also like the optionality. They have a whole bunch of divisions that they work in. And the one that I'm curious to check on now that we're revisiting it is a year ago, they called out travel a whole bunch. And I want to see, it, it, have they made progress there? Right. And then for, uh, fifth, at the time, they were growing extremely quickly, very, very rapidly. Um, but uh, the stock so far has not worked out. So what, what were we were concerned about at the time? All right. So the first thing is running out of room to grow. I did a little back of the envelope math. This would be like Amazon operating in California, Oregon and Washington. Roughly the same population land size. I'm not sure about, but they, they're constrained and they, they do have a hostile neighbor that they share a border with. So the question is, are they going to go anywhere else? Right. Uh, number two, we were surprised that this company was not producing free cash flow. It was not free cash flow positive. Given how much scale this company had in its region, that was a little bit concerning. And third, that geopolitical risk we just talked about. That's that's one of those things. We're not going to see anything in this report when we revisit it. That's something that we would see pop up on the news headlines. But when we scored this company, for me, it was below my investable category. I think the core business scored very well. However, the currency uh, movements and the dilution were a bit of concern. So I put this in my thumbs down category. And for me, it got a thumbs up. The moat was a big part of it. Um, the optionality was a big part of it. So I, I want to revisit those and I want to look at free cash flow. I want to yeah. see where they stand. And we said what to watch moving forward. First thing was competition. This company did have competition. So we want to see that the company has continued to execute. Uh, we want to see what those growth rates are like. Look, we've seen all those e-commerce players in North America. Their growth rates have contracted notably now that society is opening up. What's going on at Coupang? Are they experiencing the same thing? Uh, third, we wanted to keep an eye on profits. We wanted this company to become free cash flow positive sooner rather than later. And like I said, travel, what's going on with that? They, they called it out so many times. This is where you get to see if management talks about something, are they going to turn that from idea to reality or have, did they, did they take a swing and they miss? Right. So here is our checklist. I have these pulled back up. We're going to start with mine. So we will uh, put in a new one, TPNG. Here is the score on uh, a year ago. Uh, today is 8-18-2022. And we're going to see how this has changed. So let's try Coupang IR. Coupang. Oh, you know, we... And we we could have gone to um, I, I bet that uh, I bet that stock card if they they should have a link right to it too. 
They usually you're, do a great job of that. Yeah, you're correct. Okay, so this is a $18 stock. And how did I ever live without coupang? So there's the mission right yep. there. Coupang's reimagining the commerce experience with the goal of wowing each customer from the instant they open the coupon app to the moment the order is delivered. Powered by dynamic end-to-end e-commerce and logistics networks and a culture of customer centricity, Coupon has broken trade-offs around speed, selection, and price. Uh, millions of items, fast shipping, 365 days a year. So we'll definitely pull up the most recent earnings report. We'll definitely pull up the most recent transcript. Uh, this is from August 10th, so that's not too. That's just last week. Yeah, uh, they had that. Now this is a is this is going to be a foreign company. So oh the gosh. filings that we're going to be looking for are going to be the annual report. Look at that, and the proxy statement right next go. to each each other. Do you remember the name of the CEO? I would be. I do not. Bomb uh, Kim. Bomb and I believe Kim. that's the founder as well. Yes. Uh, let's let's just check out how much uh, stock he owns. Uh, currently, so he owns 177 million Class B shares. Bomb Kim owns 177 million Class B insiders own Neil Meta. I got a feeling that's going to be a board member. Yeah, investor. Yep. Uh, but either way, 177 <laughs> million shares for him, and they look like super voting shares. So keep that in mind. I have a feeling that's going to score uh, just fine. So let's yeah, try. So, yeah, that that's about. I just did some back of the envelope math. So he owns about ten percent of shares outstanding. Okay, it's, it's about three point two billion dollars, and this is about a thirty-two billion dollar company. Thirty thirty-two billion dollar company. Okay, uh, Coupang announces record Q two gross profit. Not often that gets the headline of one point two billion and gross part gross profit margin improvement of two hundred and fifty basis points over. Sequentially over the first quarter. Okay. Usually you call that out because your top line growth wasn't very good. Or you call that out because it was awful last quarter. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Coupon customers are turning us from amazing experience, blah, blah, blah. We increased our investment to a record 500 million in Q2 alone in exclusive discounts, free Ooh. rocket delivery, and free couponing pay video content for our WOW members. Is that a we had to? move right and it's tough right because amazon did this all the time and that was the right move for them but uh i i i hate seeing we invested in discounts yeah. that is wall street speak that just drives me crazy because what it means is we couldn't sell our stuff so we cut prices on the flip side they did say that gross profit increased so that's true that's true um anyway uh, we are pleased to report that we achieved positive adjusted EBITDA. Awful metric, but it was positive. You're not even a, done yet on a consolidated basis. Yeah. Generating 66 million across the business, improving 157 million from the prior quarter. So it seems like the prior quarter was a disaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> over the past two quarters, we've driven a total improvement of over 350 million, a reflection of our continued execution across the company. Uh, we provided... At the beginning of the year, we provided a total company adjusted EBITDA loss below $400 million. We are now guiding a G wow. positive adjusted EBITDA for the full year. So that's, that's a big. nice so turnaround. Midpoint of negative $200 million to now positive. Okay. Uh, total revenue is up 12%. Wait, what? That, that I mean, that, that coincides. Um, what? Wait, it's up 12% year over year and up 27% year over year. Oh, on a constant currency. Okay. Constant currency. Uh, 27%. Got it. So a lot of this has to do with a stronger dollar. Yes. Okay. Right. So okay. revenue is up 27% in the things that they can control. Right. So that's that's the number I'm going to look at and for is yeah. this business doing well? Yes. Gross profit was 1.2 billion. So their gross margin was... 20 ish percent, 24 percent, mm -hmm. an 24. increase of 75 yep. percent year over year, or 41 percent, including the impact of the FC fire in 2021. We should uh, look into that, but let me just say real quick 24 percent gross profit. Brian, you and I earlier this week were looking at Amazon's gross profit, and if I'm not mistaken, it's like 13 percent. Depends on how you calculate it. 
Right. It, you, that's 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 very true. It does depend on how you calculate, but 24% doesn't sound too bad. Yep. Gross profit margin improved 250 basis points. Well, the point of that is when you're looking at the value of this company, um, the price to sales ratio is better be low. Better right. be really low if your gross margin is that low. Net right. loss improved 134 million to 75 million. Net loss was still 75 million. Uh, major milestone of positive just EBITDA. Product commerce net revenue was 4.9 billion, up 27%, over four times the growth rate of the Korean product e-commerce segment. Getting market share. Mm -hmm. um, so checkbox for competition. Uh, product commerce adjusted EBITDA margin marked a record 2% and improvement of 455 basis points. Yeah. Okay. We now expect positive EBITDA for the full year. Okay. Let's look. Active customers up f just 5%. I think well, this is a tough comparison period. I, I think it is, but let me just, let me just check here. South Korea's population is 50, roughly 50 million. And so if you think about households, I don't know what, does that mean there's maybe 20 to 25 million households? Probably Ish. 20. Yeah, but, maybe 25. So, so the, that's not their fault. Like there's well, not well, how do they define a customer? Growth. What's that? Is a customer a household or is a customer? I imagine it's a household because they have subscription, this wow subscription product. So I, my only point is, is that you do need to take that in consideration when you're thinking about, well, what am I buying here? But it's not like, to me, I see that and I'm not like, oh, they've lost popularity. Oh, it's very, very like, much. Oh, but they, they're running out of room. What, they're running out of room. Right. 5% active customer growth, which means you got to make it up with total net revenue per active customer, just $282 for the quarter. So if you're ordering... If you're ordering theoretically everything from this company, 282 bucks, including groceries and all that kind of stuff for a quarter. Mm -hmm. And that's the average. That that's their growth avenue, right? Yes, that's definitely that that's that's where things need to move the needle. And I assume these are in dollars too. So this is a translated figure. So keep that in mind. Uh, gross profit was up 41%. So strong improvement in gross margin. The loss was terrible. Adjusted EBITDA was negative. Okay. Product commerce was up 13%. Or 27. 27, excuse me. Yes, 27%. And developing offerings, that was their newer stuff, right? It was up 24%. I, I'd want more color, and I bet we can get it when we look at the annual report, but the difference between the developing and the product offerings. Um, oh, okay. I'm sure travel is in there. Yes. And some uh, other things. I was just scratching my head about how can 10% plus 13% equal 12, but that makes sense actually, because I'm looking at those instead. Okay. okay. Um, so the other revenue is, I mean, 2% of the total, 4%. And I'm just doing a little bit of, um, of, of research here and what I'm seeing is, so we did ours in May and I'm only saying this because we've read about this FC fire now. So what I pulled up is that in June, so about two months after we did our video, yep. there was a fire um, at a warehouse, a firefighter passed away. Um, and as you might expect, because there was a fire at one of its warehouses, it completely uh, slowed down all of that amazing delivery that we talked about at the beginning. So they're still in recovery mode from that. It, yeah, or, or at least they're saying, if you're looking backwards, we're, th those are still involved in our, our th those are the effects of that are still in our results. And your financial statements year over year. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so let's look at their about statement. Coupang offers a variety of services, let's say, and video streaming through Coupang Play and has offices all over. Yep. They, they really have offices all over. Why do they have offices in the U.S.? Are they coming to the U.S.? Or know. they just want talent? It's hard to know. I do know that uh, Kim Baum went to school in the United States, mm -hmm. so that's okay. part of it. Um, okay, so $3 billion in cash. Mm-hmm. 1.4 billion in inventories. That was relatively stable. 
uh, property point equipment looks good. Operating lease, right of use assets. This is a nothing burger. No goodwill. Great. That's great. Um, accounts payable actually went down. Expenses, etc. So four point three billion in current liabilities. Wow, they have a lot of accounts payable versus um, inventories and accounts receivable. So this is a company that's being financed by its customers, by its well, suppliers. Yeah, I mean, in a way that kind of makes sense because because they 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 don't hold that much inventory, right? They hold some inventory, but they do a lot of third party stuff. Well, yeah. So inventory is one point four billion. So just in the quarter, they did five billion in sales. So inventory turns in the quarter were three. So that means mm -hmm. each the inventory lasts they, a month. A month. Mm -hmm. um, obviously higher for the groceries and stuff. Long term debt went up to but six six hundred million. Still way less than their cash balance, but their yeah. cash balance is down. Yeah. What happened there? Um, paid in capital deficit. Yep. Okay. Uh, retail sales. So 1.7, is that correct? 1.76 billion shares outstanding. He owned 177 million. So to yep. your point, 10%, 10%, 10%. Yep. Uh, 10 he owns uh, the CEO and founder owns 10% of the company, which is 3 billion at mm -hmm. current prices. Yep. Yeah, let's, so this is the cash flow statement, um, six month period. So the net loss down substantially uh let's check how about stock-based compensation equity-based compensation was flat so 128 million doesn't sound like much on a compared that, to this but, that was one of the things that you knocked them for yeah but uh compared to that compared to gross profit well but you're doing you're comparing over three months you should compare over six because that's what uh that's that's what we're oh you're you're about. correct you're correct um, thank you. But look at the dilution rate. So two mil 20 million shares divided by, what's that, 1%? Yeah. However, if you look at the six months, which is probably not fair because it's when they went public, it's much bigger. Th this is the more meaningful to me. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So um, I'm going to, so their dilution rate, I'm going to not Improve. knock them for anymore. Right. Exactly. That's an acceptable amount of stock-based compensation. Um, okay. Payables were up huge, but the the net loss, so that their cash from operations is much smaller than their stated net loss. The biggest thing there is, oh, they had a big write off uh, for um, fire, fire, but that's going to come out of here. Uh, what else is the biggest source of cash? Yeah, payables, and then receivables, receivables, receivables. Yeah, so they are really. They are funding themselves in a large way off of their suppliers. So they must have generous payment terms with their suppliers. Well, I was going to say, isn't that a sign of a moat? Yes. Well, that's a good thing. Right. I, I, that, okay. Because that's that's what I thought too. If you can command that from the people, that means they must really need you. Exactly. You're basically taking in goods, selling them and collecting cash on them faster than you have to pay your suppliers, which is mm -hmm. a very good thing for your business. Mm hmm Yep. So it looks like their run rate is about negative $1 billion. A billion. That's not great. Negative a billion down from what kind of flat? Yeah. It's, it's What's hard to know is, well, this is, this is the Amazon framework, right? Yeah. That you have to, that that's how you build your moat right. because it's so stinking expensive to deliver stuff to people's front door a couple hours later. You are correct. Um, so I have the transcript here and okay. we're just going to skim through it. We know the financials. Customers continue grow at multiples of the segment in Korea in just three short years. By 2025, that e-commerce segment is projected to exceed 290 billion in sales. While we've grown significant scale, we remain a small portion of what's expected to soon become the third largest e-commerce opportunity in the world. What is their current sales? Well, five. if they did five, yep. then, you know, let's say 25. Yeah. So in theory, there's still lots of upside for that number. Right. Okay. We always strive to make experiences richer and prices lower. We increase our investment in free rocket shipping, exclusive discounts, and free content for our WoW membership by 50% uh, to 500 million. So those are investments. Okay. Unmatched delivery. 
Um, a recent study by KPMG wow. found Coupang have 25 and 60% average price advantage compared to major competitors for top selling items across the surveys confirmed. Man, I wish more companies would say stuff like that. Let me now let me let me just stop and say something real quick though, too, is that the and I'm gonna be using Amazon as our as our analog to compare to for a while here, is that that was that was the case with Amazon for a long time too, right? You could find the cheapest prices on Amazon. Over time, I don't know about you, Brian. You can tell me what you think. I, I don't find that to be the case anymore. Equal on Amazon, product, yeah, you, as in competitors caught up. Right. Competitors are offering the same. You, I could find a cheaper X, but it's usually not as good. If I want to find the same pen, it's going to be the same on their website as it is on Amazon's website. So I expect that that advantage will go away over time. The differentiator then is that convenience, is that membership to the wow, which is prime, basically. And habits. Like, oh, and habits. So over time... I, I'm I'm almost a little bit frustrated to see that their products are so much cheaper just because over time it's that delivery that makes the difference. At the same time, they're that much cheaper and their gross profits going up. So mm -hmm. what do I know? Uh, to me, that just seems we have a moat and we even have pricing power. Yeah. Bezos has said for many years we did uh, sensitivity analysis and the, they always said raise prices and we just refused to do it. Yeah. So anyway. Um, I, I'm still going to give them great for the moat scores. So that's improving on mine. Um, to have more visibility, we broke out product commerce as a segment and represented our core commerce and fresh offerings separate from developing segments. Oh, so they didn't do it, but they didn't, they weren't, they didn't break it out before, but they did now. Okay. Hmm. Product commerce generated 98 million of adjusted EBITDA. We continue to see strong gross profit margins result in product commerce with improvements of 158 basis points, net of the fire. So even higher. Display inflation. These results were driven by levers we highlighted in Q1. Benefits from investment in technology, infrastructure, automation, and scaling and advertise. Uh, the progress you've made and the 2% adjusted EBITDA margin that we recorded is just a glimpse of the significant long-term profitability of the business. The rate of improvement head won't be consistent or as dramatic each quarter, but we're excited about the potential. Product commerce grew 27% and 3% year over year. Broad product e-commerce segment in Korea grew 6% and 0% quarter over quarter. So we've, our share They're of our e-commerce growth has grown each quarter since we've gone public. Yep. Our fresh offering, fresh annual run rate stands at $3 billion. So that's their food and um, stuff that's like, give it to me now. Groceries. Yeah. To be clear, groceries, because eats is different. Groceries. Like, yes. Uh, restaurants. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yep. Millions of orders. The vast majority of our active customers did not make a purchase. Wait, wait. Fresh is still far from its full potential. The vast majority of our active customers did not make a purchase in Fresh in Q2. Wow. Hmm. Encouraged by the progress in fulfillment and logistics by Coupang, which allows this is the most important paragraph to me. Yep. To leverage our rocket delivery service infrastructure, this off offer promises to unlock for customers the speed and convenience of rocket delivery. Mm -hmm. Uh, over 90% of the third-party merchants benefited from the service provided by FLC were small and medium-sized businesses with less than 2.5 million in sales, has the potential to unleash value for both products and customers. This is them following Amazon's playbook to a T. Yep. And just doing it better. By Amazon. And just doing it better. Mm-hmm. Um, which not only saves box six and plastic waste, but reduces the number of trips our, tux, our uh, trips our trucks make. Yeah, I remember that, right? You the you just get the product. They, they take yeah. the packaging and everything like that. Yeah. Will there be a day when we look at our packaging from Amazon and think, what were we thinking? How come we got so much? It's possible. Although yeah. truth be told, I never have to buy boxes when I move or anything like that. <laughs> I've got so many. This allowed us to eliminate virtually all styrofoam. These efforts will save 8 million trees. Uh, Revenue increased 24% for delivering offerings, but declined 7% quarter over quarter, driven by our Eats offering. Hmm. It's due in part to the post-COVID shutdown and online food agreement segment in Korea. Growth has not been our prior priority this past quarter. As we mentioned, our primary focus needs continues to be on making structural improvements that will improve customer experience and position us more efficient for our next phase of expansion. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Making investments. 
uh, we're doing our part to execute new momentums of wow. Don't start with what looks easy, work backwards. We will employ technology, prioritize growth and long term cash flows. Okay, thank you for our employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We saw basically all of this. Uh, we saw the guidance. Uh, we are more convinced than ever in our potential to generate 7 to 10% or greater adjusted EBITDA margins, and they're currently at two. So that would be operating leverage uh, there. Okay. Um, was there anything in their 10K that we were specifically looking for, Brian? The travel, right? Yeah, I'd be curious. And and whatever they called their developing offerings in general. Yep. Uh, yeah, so to me, this is the our expansion. We have expanded our offerings to include customer electronics, food, and grocery store. Uh, may include new risks. We may description of business. Oh, I guess there's not much in travel on here. Mm, that's too bad. Um, what was it called? Developing offerings? Yeah, developing offerings. I don't see that. Yeah. Wait, so I one thing they said in the Q2 is that they recently reorganized that. So it's possible they did that after they filed their annual report. Okay. That would make sense. Uh, let's read through the company just really quick. Historically, it's done this. Yep. We know all this. Product commerce, okay, includes core marketplace retail, adver advertising products, and growth initiatives includes Coupang Eats, Coupang Play, international, and fintech. Let's search for international. That's probably a good word. Um, okay. Great. Tell us where you're going next. I think last time it was Singapore. Well, you could type in Singapore, see yeah, if that comes up. That would require me to spell it right, though. Uh, jurisdictions of the United States. While you're looking for that, to answer Carlo's yeah. question, um, I do not believe that Amazon has any significant operations in South Korea. I could be wrong. They might have one fulfillment center. Okay. That oh, didn't come go. up. So I didn't see... I didn't see anything about that, but I know that they said one of their growth, one of their growth plans was we should read through that. Sorry, I'm skipping around so much. That's okay. I'm curious. Do they have um, on their IR page? Do they have a, a presentation? Oh, good question. Why did we not look for that? Events. Nope. Um, stock Sometimes in news. Nope. News? Oh, was there? Yeah, so, sometimes companies put it in news. It doesn't look like they did. Oh, they, this is a new CFO. New board member. Let's look at the first quarter. This is really zoomed in. Okay. That looks bad. Um, yeah, I don't see I don't see it. I don't okay. see a presentation. That's too bad. Yeah. I this is either. definitely a company that needs help getting its story out there. So you would think you would think they'd want that there. And for GSG9, we already looked at the proxy statement. The com the uh, Kim Baum owns 10% of shares outstanding. Currently 10%. Yeah. Um, so they just hired a new CFO. Oh, wait. No, as new board member. Never mind. So this was their last quarter. So this mm, was the first quarter. I think that's quarter. fourth quarter. Fourth that's fourth quarter. Oh, that is, wait, March? Oh, that's that's too old then. Um, okay. Frictionless returns, growth priorities, opportunities, attract more customers, engage, explore. Okay, this is what it, what it is. Always exploring new businesses, okay? And expand our offerings to new art markets outside Korea. We continue to invest in resources and testing new products and services that may appeal to customers. So... I don't see we're going outside. At least they're not calling it out here. Yeah, well, nothing, nothing that they feel comfortable telling us about right. at this point. Um, um, for what it's worth, I'm just looking at their first quarter. They yep. brought in about the same amount of, of revenue. Uh, it was up 22%, oh, 32% year over year on a constant currency basis. 32%? Yeah. Okay. So this was slower. 
But again, that matches exactly with what we've seen everywhere. Right. Um, okay, let's just check glass door. And then mm -hmm. anything else you want to check for? We could go read through the management's discussion analysis if, if uh, that's helpful in the 10Q. So the glass door ratings are meh. The worst yeah. one is senior management. Ooh, straight downhill. What do, what's the overall score? 3.6. They were enough to squeak by in my book. A couple hundred. So yeah, how accurate not, is that? I don't know, but that is, it who is knows, something. Did the fire play a role in that? Hard to say. Uh, right. Um, you, you are, you are correct. Um, so let's just go to the, um, I mean, I, I think I'm okay. Can I just mention one thing before we move ahead? Yeah. We talked about C limited's earnings earlier this week. And so yep. I think it's interesting. We're talking about two e-commerce players in the same general area of the world. Yep. One thing that I really like about Coupang's approach that I wish C limited would do is that Coupang is like, look, it's super expensive to build up fulfillment. It's super hard to get it from where you have a phone, you order something, it shows up on your doorstep, you know, a couple hours later. But Coupang is like, we're going to perfect that before we go anywhere else. At mm -hmm. least, I don't know if they've said that, but that's what their actions show me. Mm -hmm. Whereas Limited, they had, and, and they're working on their fulfillment, but the, their fulfillment network is nowhere near what Coupang has. Now, C Limited is much harder. Like they have seven maritime countries that they're trying to connect, but they're also spending tons of money to go to Brazil and capture market share, which to me is cheap market share. Yeah. Like what South, what they're getting, what Coupang is getting South, in South Korea is expensive market share. Let me also say I own C Limited. I don't own Coupang. So I'm not saying one is necessarily much better than the other, but I, I appreciate the build the moat first rather than grab market share and, and get the get the core engine and cash flow flowing first which you can then do it they're not there yet but no they're making progress but this is what you have to do to get there okay uh so on my checklist so on the balance sheet they have more cash than debt six times more cash what? five to six five to six more times cash than debt okay well, I was going to give them a knockoff point, but I'll still give them a good one. Gross margin is very low, but it is rising, so I'll give them one again. Returns on capital are negative. Free cash flow is negative. Earnings are negative. Last time I gave them five points for the network effect. Yeah, I, I, I think their moat is just fine and widening. Bottom line, you're giving them max points. Yep. Uh, for optionality, I gave them a seven the last time new industries probably too generous i'll go probably. six now because all those other opportunities are not generating enough revenue to justify them they could one yep. day um yep. but still a great optionality score um organic revenue growth is still high um i'm going with the the um constant currency numbers not the not the um currency adjusted numbers because they have no control over that. They seem to be the top dog. They have lots of operating leverage ahead. Uh, customer acquisition costs we did not get. They don't break out sales and marketing costs. Last time I gave them a three. I'm guessing that's fair. Um, mm -hmm. Customer dependence. Once a customer's on board, yeah, they're going to be ordering from this company no matter what's going on. Revenue recurring for sure. Do they have pricing power? We just saw gross margin rise. I'll keep that the same. The founder is still involved. High inside ownership. Okay, Glassdoor ratings. I'm going to take a point off there. And the mission statement, yeah, to me, a two. Uh, how has Coupang stock done uh, since it came public? We know the answer there is not well. It's down, uh, what was it? Well, it's down 50% since we did it. Yeah, it's down. Well, it's down. It was 40 when we did. I mean, when it came public, it was 50. Now it's 17. So it's down 64%. All time, so there's no way, um, there's no way it's outperforming the market, right? This is a market a loser, so it was zero there. They're not returning capital shareholders, and how have they done versus Wall Street's estimates? Let's go to analysis. Um, beat, 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 miss, miss, zero. 
Okay, that is a 72. So the score got slightly worse there. Accounting problems, no. Customer concentration, no. Industry disruption, no. Outside forces, nope, because that's covered in currency movements. Big market loser, yes, but that's mostly related to... When it came public. Exactly. Um, binary event, nope. Extreme dilution, I'm not taking off points this time. Growth back acquisition, nope. Complicated financials, antitrust concerns, nope. Headquarter risk, yeah, you still got North Korea right above you, and you still have um, foreign currency moving stuff. So I'm still going to subtract uh, some points there. No, that's not right. And there. No, I think it's not right on the previous one. The, the last one, it wasn't right, because that last one should be negative, negative six. Oh, yeah. I don't know why the formula got messed up in those ones. But uh, this this should be equals that. Plus that didn't move. Didn't move. <laughs> All that. All that for, for I'm still not buying it. <laughs> but let's see if it happens on yours. All right. For one thing, I'm willing to give full. I was being a stickler on that mission statement before. I think I was being a little bit too hard. So I'm going to give them full credit. Now, when it comes to the moat, I'm going to give them full credit for the network effect. And here's why. Seeing how they are able to to wait to pay their, their third-party merchants, mm -hmm. that they'll take in the payment from the customers, tells me they need this. Yeah. No, those merchants need couponing, and the customers need couponing. So I'm giving them full credit for the network effect. I'm also going to give them full credit for the low cost. Um, yep. The low cost, because I, th there's no way that someone can easily match what couponing is doing. Uh, there's just no way. And then I give them a point for intangibles. So five total. So Oof. that point went up. Okay. Optionality, I'll leave it two and a half. Um, yes. Okay. Financial fortitude, we're downgrading. I'm going to a zero because look, they, they, they've they got a net cash position of two and a half billion, but they're losing a billion per year. So that... I thought this score was pretty generous last time. So I, Yeah, I, I'm agreeing with you now too. Uh, zero here. And then everything else is the same. The glass door almost dipped, uh, but it's it's holding where it is. And so what do you get when you add all that together? I mean, it's it's going up. So what you I love, there are agreeing with uh, uh, Druckenmiller. Uh, yeah. So we go to our port portfolios. So you're saying this company is anti-fragile, which is, yes. which is your thumbs, thumbs up. up. So we're going to be adding it to our stock card portfolio. Uh, let's see. Today's date is a, is uh, August eighteenth. The buy price at twenty. So what's that, Brian? Uh, 50, uh, 50, 55. 55 shares, and the score is an eleven and increased a half. to eleven point five. One thing I'll say is that that geopolitical risk would probably be accounted for in concentration risk because it's. Could one decision in one room at one time made by one group of people affect this company? Yes, it and could. It could. There's a leader to the north who could make that decision. So maybe I'm missing that. Um, but. And um, well, I'm putting this in my thumbs down portfolio. Mm -hmm. I would never bet against this company in real life, but it's still in my uninvestable uh, uh, category. Uh, and so far, well, Hard to really draw conclusions given the intense volatility that we've seen uh, of the market over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and as a uh, as a reminder, uh, if you want to get into our uh, portfolio contest, you can go to Stock Card and you can uh, enter our Beat the Brian's uh, contest. And uh, the winner each quarter gets a free uh, upgraded ticket to Stock Card. So thank you to Stock Card for sponsoring the video. And the winner overall for the whole year gets thousand dollars, and you have yes. a huge advantage. The market's just started to pick up. You go in now you've got better chances of being the winner now than you did against everybody else who started in January, which may be unfair or it may not, but go out and join that Beat the Brian's contest. Since uh, Sea Limited has uh, bailed on India, wouldn't it be better for Sea Coupang to enter India so they're not competing with... Yeah. All right. So here's my thoughts on this, because I saw this, I wanted to, to hit this. So thank you. One... C Limited has not bailed on India for e-commerce. C Limited was never in India for e-commerce. C Limited bailed on India for Garena, which mm -hmm. is their gaming unit, and they didn't bail on India. India booted them out. They said, you can't do Free Fire in India anymore. 
The other thing I'll say is I don't think Kupang should go and do that because look, we forget that things happen in the real world and it's not just like tech. It Amazon has a million employees. They have a building 40 miles south of where I live that covers like hundreds of thousands of square feet and it has to be air conditioned and it needs electricity and they employ thousands of people. And that's just for this tiny corner of the state of Wisconsin. If you wanted to do the same thing that uh, Kupang does in India, we're talking tens, maybe hundreds of billions of dollars, which Kupang doesn't have. So no, I don't think that they should do that. That was my thought too. Uh, yeah. I would say that that's too big of a market for them to go after. Yeah. I would rather have them go after, say, Indonesian islands or like Malaysia or something around something in their same time zone where they it's a small geography that they can go in and build. In fact, I wouldn't mind it if this company bought a leader in one of those categories and then applied its coupang know-how on top and did that. But I actually like that this company is focused on, let's get to profitability in our core market. Uh, let's really nail that before we go uh, too far outside. Um, but yeah, um, uh, Jeff found that they're in the process of entering Japan, Taiwan, and Singapore. So to Super me, smart. Singapore cool if that market's open taiwan cool if that market's open those are small physically japan that's going to be much harder but um i'd actually prefer them to just take on one or two <laughs> versus go go anywhere bigs um well, let me ask you this brian yep. you are a c limited shareholder i'm mm -hmm. a c limited shareholder yeah i would much rather c limited took the approach that coupang does personally with their e-commerce business i i love their their fine their their c money but yep I would worry a little bit about Kupang exploiting the fact that C Limited went after cheap growth rather than going through the pain. And it is a pain of building their fulfillment network in Southeast Asia. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I agree with you. C Limited has um, some questions to answer for sure. Yep. Right. They, they're, they're, they seem to be growth at any cost. Yeah. A mode in 2020 when, when capital was free. And now they're seeming to getting the, we're more focused on um, growing uh, responsibly, especially now that the core markets are under attack. Um, I do own C Limited. It's a, it's a very small position for me. I think it's a much bigger one uh, for you, but yeah. uh, we'll see. Yep. We'll see what happens. Okay. Well, thank you all for, for watching. I certainly learned. I think this company is improving. I think that there's more work to do. Uh, the valuation today, actually, we didn't even check that, but let's just look really quickly. So... 21 billion in sales and 31 billion dollar market cap. So one and a half times sales on a gross profit basis, assuming Yahoo is correct. 3.7 billion eight in trailing times gross profit. About what? eight times gross profit. Eight times gross profit. To me, that's the more telling metric. So I don't view this as a crazy cheap company. You can't look at that one time sales and say super uh, super cheap. But Wall Street is expecting relatively modest growth, but I'll keep in mind a whole bunch of that is due to um, currency movements, right? Right. And the operating leverage that's ahead means that their, their profitability should improve way faster over time than their revenue growth does. Because once you go through the pain in the butt of building out that fulfillment center, hiring those thousands of people, buying the trucks to deliver them, they're bought. Now they have yep. to be replaced eventually, but the, the costs for that come down significantly. One thing I want to point out, Brian, I think if they get another half point somewhere in there for me, this would be the very first stock that's in your why bother. Yeah. And it's in my anti-fragile. So this could be one that's really interesting to look at five years from now. If this company becomes free cash flow positive, though, it becomes in my investable and that, that would make it go into your why don't I own it category. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, very cool. All right. Well, we hope that you found this to be useful. Look forward to checking in with um, uh, Kupang again. Again, I gave it the thumbs down. Brian gave it the thumbs up. We'll see what happens in the future. So we'll check in with this one uh, down the road. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Brian's out.